history of the church, the most popular book in the entire Bible is hands down the Gospel of Matthew. It's the one that most Christians read for the first time when they pick up the pages of the New Testament, open to page one, that's the Gospel they're going to encounter. And yet, at the very same time, Matthew's Gospel can in some ways be the most mysterious and the most difficult of all four. Take, for example, the opening chapter of his gospel. It begins with the famous genealogy of Christ, where he begins by saying, Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. All those long lists of begats in what seems to be a kind of boring and even maybe irrelevant genealogy of Jesus Christ. Why does Matthew begin there? Does he want people to stop reading the book? Why is the genealogy so important? This first chapter of Matthew's Gospel is indicative of the rest of the Gospel because it shows us that Matthew's Gospel, above all four, was written for a Jewish audience. It was written in order to convince Jews living in the land of Israel in the first century that Jesus of Nazareth was really the Messiah. And yet, many of us as Christians often take that as just an assumption. We know that Jesus was the Messiah, but we don't know why he was the Messiah. And we certainly often aren't familiar enough with the Old Testament to grasp the full power and impact of Jesus' uh, life in the Gospel of Matthew. And yet it was this Gospel that converted many, many Jewish Christians in the first century to the practice and the following of the faith. So, in this Bible study, what we're going to do is we're going to try to read through the Gospel of Matthew and see it through ancient Jewish eyes. And we're going to focus on the person of Jesus Christ, but we're going to look at him through ancient Jewish categories and seeing Jesus in certain ways. Number one, as a new Moses, as the fulfillment of the life and the teachings of Moses, the most famous person of the Old Testament. Second, we're going to look at Jesus as a new David, right? David was the, uh, the, the famous king of Israel, and he was the anointed one, the Messiah, in a sense, in the Old Testament. He's actually called Mashiach. And Jesus is, as Messiah, the fulfillment of David's life. Third, we're going to look at Jesus as a new Solomon. This is an interesting one. Not many people tend to think about the parallels between the life of Solomon and the life of Christ. But there are, in fact, many parallels, and they're very important for revealing to us the fact that Jesus was a teacher of wisdom, that he was a teacher in parables, and that he was the wisest of the wise men, and that he fulfilled the life of Solomon, as well as David and Moses. Finally, we'll also see how Christ is a new Isaac, and we'll see why his passion and death wasn't some accident, right, uh, under the Roman imperial authorities, but was rather part of the divine plan from the very beginning of salvation history. These and many other topics will be covered in this Bible study on the Jewish roots and the Old Testament background of the Gospel of Matthew. And what you'll find, more than any other Gospel, Matthew teaches us the principle that the New Testament is hidden in the Old and the Old is revealed 